श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ताति स्वपदातिक नमो ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चाति देश तारिणी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरि राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे हरि राम हरि राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे हरि राम हरि राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण थैंक यू डियर श्यामा गौरी माता जी एंड ऑल द वंडरफुल ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ द कॉल थैंक यू फॉर काइंडली एंगेजिंग मी इन दिस सर्विस अर्ली मॉर्निंग श्रीमद भागवतम डिस्कशन बेस्ड ऑन द सिक्स कैंटो ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम I've been asked to um, serve this morning from Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto Six, Chapter Eighteen, Text Thirty-Eight. This is the verse that has been assigned. So we will quickly read the verse, the translation, and Shrila Prabhupada's purport, and then, in the interest of time, we will get started. Nishamya tadvacho vipro vimana paryatapyata. अहो अधर्म सुमहान अद्य मे समुपस्थित निशम्य तद्वचो विप्रो विमना पर्यतप्यत अहो अधर्म सुमहान अद्य मे समुपस्थित निशम्य तद्वचो विप्रो विमना पर्यतप्यत अहो अधर्म सुमहान अद्य मे समुपस्थित Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri Lopu Prabhupad. Translation: Upon hearing Diti's request, Kashyapa Muni was very much aggrieved. Alas, he lamented. Now I face the danger of the impious act of killing Indra. Purport: Although Kashyapa Muni was eager to fulfill the desire of his wife Diti. when he heard that she wanted a son to kill indra his jubilation was immediately reduced to nothing because he was averse to the idea so this morning granthraj shrimad bhagavatam who is non different from krishna has engaged us in the service to his lotus feet we cannot study and master shrimad bhagavatam he is our master we cannot master him we serve him by reading his words we serve him by hearing his conclusions we serve him by distributing the literature we serve him by speaking and singing his glories in line with what our acharyas have given throughout shrimad bhagavatam as krishna swarup remains our master it's not a book to be studied and uh, gained scholarship over and um, control and manipulate because we are servants we are always servants actually shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur has written that shrimad bhagavatam is like mohini murti if we have the mentality of a demon that is to cheat mohini murti and somehow get the nectar out then all that we will be left with is cheating poison <laughs> that's all like rahu tried to cheat and his head was taken away from the body so similarly if we with a different non devotional mentality if we try to approach shrimad bhagavatam either to get some knowledge out or to memorize some verses and show others how scholar scholarly we are or to memorize passages and to impress others upon how much we can remember or how we can narrate and what not then it's like a demoniac mentality where shrimad bhagavatam like mohini murti will end up cheating us instead of giving us love of godhead the weight of the head will increase on the other hand if we serve shrimad bhagavatam like the demigods taking complete shelter then shrimad bhagavatam will offer us the amrita of the churning process you can see the churning of the milk ocean took place and the supreme lord himself came out as in many incarnations actually he supported uh, the mandara chala mountain as kurmadev and at the same time so many incarnations 
Dhanvantari, Mohini Murthy, Tyadi. So Srimad Bhagavatam is like that. Is the essence of the churning process of all Shastras. Brahmam, Bodhi, Samudbhavam, Kalimalam, Pradvamsanam, Javdhyayam. Shastra describes when the milk ocean is churned, one pot comes out, nectar. But when all the Shastras are churned, then 18,000 verses, an ocean of nectar comes out in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> and only those who have divine mentality of service in the mood of a servant, like how the demigods churned, only they can get the nectar. So out of these verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, different purports and different interpretations can be, um, of course, had and inferred. But in today's discussion, let us focus on one specific word in this verse, and that is Nishamya. That is hearing. We see in this verse, Nishamya tad vacho vipraha. Kashyapa Muni, who is the Vipra, who is the Brahmana, Nishamya, he heard. What did he hear? Tad vachaha. He heard the words of his wife, Diti. And what were those words? Diti actually wanted a son. And Kashyapa Muni granted that, that desire. But however, her desire was, I want a son who will kill Indra. Now, many times, as uh, practicing devotees, we... We tend to make this mistake of belittling the position of Indra. This is a very great offense. You can see even in the Shastra, many times when Lord Shiva is glorified, Indra is glorified on the side. Pranaschama, Indraschame. I offer my life to Lord Shiva, but also to Indra is what the Vedic mantra says. <laughs> so Indra is a very powerful personality. And he goes through different movements in the Shastra whether it is the act of uh, uh, trying to um, come close to Ahalya in the absence of Gautama Rishi, or whether it is the act of trying to destroy Vrindavan through the Govardhan Leela, or taking on Krishna for the Parijata tree. So many instances can be mentioned, or whether it is disrespecting or dishonoring the presence of his guru, uh, Brihaspati, in the royal court found in the sixth canto. So, we can see so many instances are given like this. But the way to understand that, the Gaudiya way to understand this, is Sri Krishna Chaitanya Priya Bhakta Dware Annere Shikshakare Eito Prakare. This is a very important verse. That Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates, including uh, Devaraj Indra, they act in a certain way, not because of their uh, fault or not because of the anarthas in their heart, but to teach all of us a lesson. Hmm? The Supreme Lord teaches us through his dear associates. And Srila Prabhupada would give this very beautiful example. May not be uh, directly found in the present generation, but definitely during Prabhupada's era um, in, in the cultured background of Calcutta, uh, Srila Prabhupada observed and also shared it with all of us. That is the mother-in-law teaches the daughter-in-law through her own daughter. <laughs> So if the daughter-in-law is new into the house, the mother-in-law would not uh, give her any advice, right? Because the relationship has not developed completely. So the mother-in-law will teach the daughter-in-law by teaching her daughter in the presence of the daughter-in-law. Like if the mother-in-law wants to teach the daughter-in-law something, then in the presence of the daughter-in-law, she will tell the daughter, oh, you put too much salt here. Uh, you should be careful, something like that. Although the daughter would have put enough or properly, but just to give a message to someone, um, the mother-in-law would speak to the daughter. Why would Srila Prabhupada give this example? The context is Krishna teaches us through his empowered representatives like Indra. So it's not that the, the demigods are making mistakes. We should take it as we are being taught by Krishna through the example of the demigods. So in this case, Nishamyatatvacho Vipro Vimana Pariyatapyata. When Kashyapa Muni heard from his wife Diti that she wanted a son uh, who will kill Indra, who's so empowered and a very, uh, very wonderful and a very opulent, uh, very charismatic, and also um, consciousness wise, much advanced than humans, very great personality. Um, so at that time, what did Kashyapa Muni do? Aho adharma hasumahan adhyame samupastitaha. 
oh, what have I done? I have promised you my words that I will fulfill your desire. But in front of me is a great adharma, sam upastitaha. Hmm? Samyak rupena upastitaha. Upastitaha means uh, to be present. Hmm? When you have to say, I am present in class. So the teacher will say your name in the Sanskrit school. The student says, upastitosmi. Oh, I am present. <laughs> I am uh, attending, right? So sam upastitaha. Completely present before me is this adharmaha. Aho su mahan adharmaha. Very great calamity has appeared in front of me. So that is the verse that we are discussing on. So on a practical front, we need to introspect on this point that whatever we hear has a very great impact on our chitta, on our consciousness. This is a practical point. Not just for human beings, you can see that uh, sound certainly plays a very interesting scientific and a practical role in the lives of everyone. Like you can just stand under a tree and clap your hands very vigorously and you will see that the birds will fly out of uh, fear. The birds may not even see the source of the person who's clapping, right? We stand under a tree and we may see up there are a few chui, 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 chirping birds right there. <laughs> but they may not be able to see us and you just vigorously clap. It induces and inflicts uh, fear in their heart and those birds flap their wings and they fly instantaneously out of fear, not even knowing the source, but just hearing the sound, it um, inflicts some pain. So you can see the power of sound in the life of birds. On the flip side, you can see Krishna during his childhood pastimes, Kujantam Kokilai Pare. It is described Krishna would make the sounds of a cuckoo bird and the cuckoo bird would respond according to Krishna's sound. And then Krishna would mimic the sound and there used to be a nice a symphony, a nice concert, a nice jugalbandi between the cuckoo birds of Vrindavan and Krishna's transcendental vocal cords. So we give it, we are giving an example where positive sound uh, brings in joy in the heart of the birds. And on the other hand, just a, a aimless um, and, and purposeless <laughs> clapping just inflicts and instills fear in the heart of the birds and they fly away. Not just in birds, you can see even in insects like the mosquitoes. Uh, of course, people have very nasty ways of killing them. But uh, even when I was growing up, there used to be a certain uh, process by which you emit a certain frequency, sound frequency, which knocks off the uh, mosquitoes far away. And then came uh, the generation of the, um, the coils where a certain smell knocks the mosquitoes away. But before that was a generation where they used to have a certain sound frequency and it's not too much and it's not too little. And just the sound frequency would keep the mosquitoes away because it's it sets a certain impact in the life of the mosquitoes, in the hearing ability of the mosquitoes. So whether it's mosquitoes as small as the, as the mosquitoes or the chirping of the birds, there's effective sound in their lives. Also, we can see the classic example of dhanyas mamuda gatayopi harinya eta yananda nanda namupata vichitra vesham akarnya venu ranitam saha krishna sara pujam dadur virajitam pranayava lokai. In the Venu Geet, you can see Krishna's flute sound um, certainly caused a great um, source of exhilaration and joy in the heart of the deer. So much so that dhanyas mamuda gatayopi harinya eta. Yananda Nanda Namupata Vichitra Vesham. The Srimad Bhagavatam describes when Krishna would play the flute, the deer of Brindavan, who are very dear to Krishna, and Krishna was very dear to the deer. <laughs> so when Krishna would play the flute and Krishna's deer flute sound would uh, reach the ear of the deer of Brindavan, then it's described the deer would get stubbed, completely uh, still and stunned by the sound. And they would stand like painted pictures. This is the effect of Krishna's flute sound. And they would try to rush to come to Krishna. It is, it is the fight between two emotions. It is the autsukya, which means the enthusiasm, the eagerness to run to Krishna. But yet at the same time, the flute sound of Krishna would make them completely stunned and their feet would get stone-footed 
which means they couldn't move and they would stand like painted pictures. And yet at the same time, it was their desire to run to Krishna and they would be stunned again by the flute sound. And it's it, they want to run and then get stunned and then run and get stunned. And this effect has been described in Srimad Bhagavatam. And then the male deer, the husband of these female, would nudge and almost take the female to Krishna <laughs> as they would get stunned and not being able to reach Krishna. And when they would come closer to Krishna, they would lick Krishna's lotus feet and offer him flowers in the form of loving glances through their doe eyes. So very beautiful description given in Srimad Bhagavatam. Even in the present generation, um, actually I have a very dear friend who's a flute player. And he mentioned to me that when he went into a deep forest um, a few years ago and he played the flute, it took him about 30 to 45 minutes of playing the flute. And then after that, there was a group of deer which actually came close. And they were stunned. Of course, they didn't lick his feet and they were not acting the way the deer of Brindavan did. But they were stunned by the sound. They were hypnotized and mesmerized by the sound. And they would stand close to him and just look at him. And then when he would stop playing the flute, reality would dawn in their eyes that he, is, he could actually be a potential hunter who has come to uh, take their lives. And they would run away. And he explains to me that he would play the flute and they would come back again. Quite exciting. So even in the present generation, you can see the effect of sound, whether it's in mosquitoes or whether it's in the bird or whether it's in the deer. And who is here who doesn't like to hear melodious music, right? You can see when you hear music, which is not very good, like not very high class, uh, the lower part of the body starts tapping. Like you hear some Rajasik music and your foot tapping. <laughs> but on the other hand, you can hear Sattvic music, classical music, soothing music. And you will see the upper body, the upper part of the head starts to move. So the body gives you a sign automatically how it reacts to sound, <laughs> right? Automatically, even without you realizing whether you want to foot tap or whether you want to move your head. And of course, in Kirtan, when devotees foot tap and jump and move their head and their body, that's a transcendental experience. We are into when talking about that. And who can deny the effect of sound in our lives as human beings, right? Who prefers to be next to a window where there's honking of horn and people are, you know, stuck in traffic and shouting and yelling and fighting going on or um, there's some construction work going on or some metal crushing sound which uh, then shivers down our spine. We don't like that kind of sound. On the other hand, imagine being next to nature where you can hear the humming of the bees and the chirping of the birds early in the morning. And you can hear the sound of the rustling of the leaves because of the breeze. And at the same time, the sound of the trickling down of the water because of the movement of the river. How soothing. And automatically the person becomes peaceful just by that sound. So it is of paramount importance to know that sound certainly has a great effect in our lives. When someone comes and uh, sits next to us and starts um, yelling at us or scolding or criticizing someone else or bad mouthing, uh, naturally we feel a sense of contamination in the heart. We don't feel very good. We don't want to sit next to a person who's a critical fault finder. On the other hand, um, if you have someone who encourages and through words, they speak kind words and sweet words and inspiring words, and they speak even praise, and they uplift and empower, you want to hear such people. You want to sit next to such people. You want to be empowered by the sound. So it's, let's say it's two people who are both humans, and they have like the same vocal ability and the same expressing, articulating ability. But depending on what is being articulated, the emotions in the heart change. You could have someone who can yell and scream in public at you, and you hold that uh, that scar in you know as a personal blemish all your life, or you could have someone who even privately taps your shoulder and says, "I am so proud of you. I am so happy that you did this. Thank you. I pray to Krishna that may He bless you." You see, just that one interaction it empowers us. It makes us feel so good. So the effect of sound, even on a practical level, is of um, undeniable importance and uh, significance. You can see other examples of even scientists performing uh, research and giving uh, their conclusions in research paper 
as the effect of sound even on plants. Like you can see as early as Jagdish Chandra Bose, a uh, very renowned uh, uh, scholar and scientist from India, uh, mentioning about this phenomenon that the effect of sound on, uh, on, on plants with sensors clipped onto their leaves. You can have a plant uh, next to a very soothing, sweet, and meditative classical music, and you will see that the growth of the plant over a span of one month uh, is very positive. And on the other hand, you can expose, not that you have to, but just for the sake of the research, uh, if you expose a plant to very bad sound vibration, even if the plant doesn't understand your words and your language, let's say if you sit next to a plant and you say you're very ugly, uh, you're dirty, I don't want you alive. Uh, effect has shown through research that such plants don't survive long. So much so that trees which are as old as 100, 200, even 300 years old in the Solomon Islands, uh, when you can't uproot them from the root, villagers and the tribal community hold hands around such a tree and they hurl abuses for 15 days every single day that we wish you die. We, you're such a curse in our family. We hate you. You're ugly and things like that, which uh, words shouldn't be spoken and uttered even, even for the sense of example. But on doing this, plants and trees which have survived centuries uh, end up drying in a few months or even a few weeks. So this is a fact that whether it's plants, whether it's creeper, whether it's trees, whether it's animals, whether it's birds, whether it's insects, whether it's human beings, um, sound, and this is all just material sound. It has so much effect, absolutely so much effect. Um, even, even from a scientific perspective, we can see that uh, sound is integral in all the elements. Bhumi rapo nalo vayu khammano buddhirevacha ahankara iti yamme bhinna prakriti rashtada. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita of the different elements who are fragmental parts and parcels of his manifestation, like earth, water, fire, air, ether, right? Now, if you think about it, what are the things that are found in, uh, on the, in the earth element of Krishna's creation, which is like mud, for example, or, or the ground? What are some things that are found? Can we see them? Yes. And can we smell the fragrance of Mother Earth? Yes. Can we taste? Do we want to? No. But can we? Yes. Uh, can we hear someone walking? Yes. And can we feel the ground by applying mud on the body? Yes. So earth element can be experienced by the eyes, by the nose, by the tongue, by the ear and the sense of touch. Now, if you go to the next element from earth, let's go to earth, water. Water is the next element. Now for water, if you see, um, smell disappears. Smell disappears. You can see water. And you can hear sound in water and you can taste and also feel whether it's hot or cold. But you can uh, smell water. Of course, you can smell the dirt in the water, but water by itself may not carry fragrance. Uh, I remember in my childhood, uh, I was taught in a Sanskrit, uh, not in a Sanskrit class, sorry, in a science class uh, that water is tasteless, colorless and odorless. So I agreed to the odorless part and I also agreed to the colorless part. But the first point they mentioned was water is tasteless and then colorless and odorless. And uh, the teacher after teaching, she said, any questions? And I put my hand up because I had just come from the temple that Sunday where I was taught Rasoham Apsukamteya. Krishna says that I am the taste in water. So I put my hand up and the Sanskrit, um, please forgive me. I don't know why Sanskrit keeps coming up in my tongue, but the science teacher <laughs> Uh, the science teacher, she said, yes, what's your question? I said, um, we have heard in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna saying that he is the taste in water, which means water definitely has taste and it has the best taste because Krishna says, I am the taste in water. So the teacher said, you please call your mother tomorrow. And I was really scared because there was like a pa parent teacher meet. Uh, they call it the PTM, parent teacher meet. So call your call your mother the next day. And, and then next, I was scared. I didn't know why, but I, I think I was in fourth grade at that point. So my mother came to the school and my teacher was telling my mother that, please tell him not to ask questions from the Bhagavad Gita because I am teaching what is taught in the science textbook. Uh, so I just remembered that. 
that how um, Prabhupada's books not just help us in the temple, but actually in real life as well. So we can see the water element, one, uh, uh, one receptive uh, organ or one ability to grasp reduces in the sense you can't smell, you can't uh, have the odor for water. Now let's move to the next. From earth, where all five senses can feel and taste and, and perceive, to water, where only four. Now let's go to fire. Now fire you can't touch. <laughs> it's reduced further in the sense, well, you can touch, but it's it's going to burn. So you can see. And of course, there is some fragrance of fire or there is some stink, depending on what's put in. And you can hear fire, but uh, you can't uh, taste fire and you can touch fire. So you can see that that ability has come down. Now, when you see with respect to and some people also have a different opinion, they say that you can touch fire, but you can smell and taste. So. Depends on who's uh, interpreting that. Either fire is taken as you can smell and you can taste, or some say you can taste and you can touch. Okay, now when you go to the next element, which is air, uh, earth, water, fire, air, which is the fourth element, uh, you can see with air, now a couple of things have reduced. You can see, uh, you can definitely feel. You can hear air when someone is saying something, you can hear and you can feel, but you can smell you can taste uh, and you can see. So with earth, all five senses possible, with fire only four and, and coming down, then water, earth, water, fire, with water only four and with fire only three and with air only two. And that is you can uh, hear and you can feel. Now, when you come to ether, which is the most um, subtle element, uh, now you can see that you can't even feel it. And there's only one thing you can do, and there's sound in ether. So one thing that is constant, you can see through earth, water, fire, air, and ether, is the sense of hearing. <laughs> it's the sense of hearing. With earth, you can hear. With water, you can hear. With fire, you can hear. With air, you can hear. And in outer space, ether, you can hear. And according to science, that is the first organ that develops in a child while being in the womb of the mother, which is the sense of hearing. And this is why we can see Prahlad Maharaj in the seventh canto. He started to hear from Narad Muni as early as being in the womb. And the last thing that winds up uh, while before the person leaves his body is the sense of hearing. He may not be able to see, may not have cognitive ability, may not be able to speak. May not even able to perceive and touch something and even contemplate. But one thing is for sure, hearing continues. And this is why we can see when a person is departing, you don't show him a picture of Krishna and you don't make him hold a Shaligram Shila uh, and you don't force him to speak Krishna Leela or Krishna Naam, but you silently continue to chant in his presence because the first element that develops in the womb and the last sense that leaves is the sense of hearing. So you can see even from a material perspective, hearing is so important. And it, depending on what we hear, our consciousness develops. Those emotions develop in the heart. Uh, we can see how did we learn different languages? How did we learn different subject matters in school? It is by hearing. It is by hearing. You can see even if someone is blind, and if they have an excellent ear or a hearing ability, uh, they can be uh, multifaceted and multi-talented. Uh, I remember in my childhood, my first Murdanga teacher uh, was by Krishna's uh, arrangement, Netrahin, couldn't perceive through the eyes, uh, but had an excellent ear. Excellent. He played so many instruments, sang so melodiously, uh, played harmonium so well, played the Mridanga so well, played the Kartal so well, and so many more instruments. And at that point, I wondered that um, he may not be able to see through his eyes, but um, just by the sound. I remember I would play the Mridanga uh, in, in my childhood, and, and the, the teacher, just by hearing, he would say, no, you should not be using this finger. You should be using this finger. And then I would use the right finger. And then he would say, no, but you should be playing it in the middle part, not in the end. So his sound, his hearing was so sharp that although he never saw me or saw the way I played the instrument, 
but just by hearing how the fingers hit the different ends of the mridanga um he was so expert so we can see this process of hearing is so important even from a material perspective that it it leaves behind impressions it leaves behind um emotions in the heart how are we woken up from sleep by an alarm clock which is again sound <laughs> if someone comes and keeps a a slogan a banner a, a placard in front of us please wake up we're not going to wake up because our eyes are shut but by having um, you know an alarm clock which rings we can see it can wake us up from material sleep even science says everything starts from a big bang not that we are going that direction but this talk about sound hmm? even from uh, the the interfaith perspective from different um, um religions and different faith we can see that the bible says in the beginning there was the word <laughs> in the start it was sound and what to speak of the vedic scriptures which speak about tene brahm hridaya adi kavaye muhyanti atsurayo that krishna actually infused all knowledge in the heart of brahma through his flute sound govindam adi purusham tamaham bajami so if material sound can have such a prominent effect in our heart then what to speak of spiritual sound vibration the ninth canto shrimad bhagavatam durvasa muni is speaking to vishnu in the in the section of uh, ambarish maharaj hmm, where uh, durvasa muni has attempted to kill maharaj ambarish and then the sudarshan chakra of vishnu chases durvasa muni all over the creation and durvasa muni finally comes to vishnu offering prayers and there he says my lord uh, you, um, yen naam shruti matrena puman bhavati nirmalah i take shelter of you whose name when heard attentively cleanses the heart so when our shila prabhu pad said chant and hear attentively this is the science by hearing attentively the sound vibration of krishna's name which is spiritual sound vibration imagine the effect it can create in the heart if by hearing mundane uh, sound vibration even if it's positive we feel so rejuvenated then how much more will we feel kimuta then how much more will we feel by hearing krishna's uh, spiritual sound vibration directly just by vibrating the sound hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare by hearing the sound vibration attentively uh, how much gain is there in the heart puman bhavati nirmalah Shastra says by hearing Krishna's name the heart will be cleansed. Cheto darpana marjanam bhava mahadavagni nirvapanam shreya kaira vachandrika vitaranam vidyavardo jivanam Bhagwan Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu our Sachinandan Gaurahari has said sarvatma snapanam param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam by hearing krishna's holy name and chanting krishna's holy name what happens cheto darpana marjanam the heart gets cleansed because the sound you're chanting through the tongue and it's bombarded through the ear both sides and it enters the consciousness and tadvag visargo janataga viplavo creates a revolution in the heart actually shila jiva goswami in bhakti sandarbha while talking about the effect of hearing uh, krishna's name Uh, he has quoted a very interesting verse from shrimad bhagavatam again from the the 6th uh, canto 16th chapter where it says nahi bhagavan aghatitam idam tvad darshanad nrunam akhila papakshaya yan nama sakra shravanad muchyate sarvakil vishayi it is described pukkashopi vimuchyate that yan nama नहीं भगवान घटित अघटित अमिदम ओ सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इट इज नॉट एस्टॉनिशिंग दैट त्वत दर्शनात नृणाम अखिल पाप अक्षय दैट बाय लुकिंग एट यू बाय हैविंग दर्शन ऑफ योर फॉर्म ऑल द सिंस आर ड्रिवन आउट ऑफ द हार्ट इट इज नॉट एस्टॉनिशिंग व्हाई यन नाम सक्र श्रवणात इफ समवन हियर्स योर नेम इवन वंस देन पुक्कशोपी इवन इफ ही इज द मोस्ट सिनफुल vimuchyate samsarat very quickly he is delivered 
from all problems and the cycle of birth, old age, disease and death. Just by hearing your name, then how much more by seeing you? What is astonishing that by seeing you, the heart is jumping in joy. When just by hearing your name once, even a sinful person can become free from all problems. So this is the power of hearing. We can see how did Rukmini Devi fall in love with Krishna even without seeing him. Shrutva gunan bhuvana sundara shunvatam ye nirivishya karana vivarai haratonga tapam. Rukmini Devi says, O Krishna, I offer my heart to you just by hearing your glories from the proper representative. By hearing your glories, Shrutva gunan, by hearing your qualities, what is happening? Um, all good qualities have come in me in the form of my heart has gotten completely attracted um, to your name, form, qualities, pastimes. Just by hearing from a Brahmana the glorious qualities of Krishna, Rukmini Devi fell in love with Krishna. Actually, in the Srimad Bhagavatam describes, by hearing straight from Krishna the words of wisdom, Nishamya Bhagavad Gitam Pritaha Pulla Mukhambujaha that Yudhishthir Maharaj, by hearing straight from Krishna, his instructions, um, he uh, pritaha, he became extremely joyful and pulla mukham bujaha. He became uh, very um, happy. <laughs> he became very happy and uh, he continued to rule after that. Vishnu Tejo Pabhrimhitam, that completely protected by Krishna's words, Yudhishthir Maharaj became very joyful just by hearing his words. So by hearing Krishna's names, by hearing Krishna's uh, qualities and leelas, certainly one becomes supremely joyful. Nishamya Gitaam Tadananga Varadhanam Vrajastriya Krishna Grihita Manasa Bhagavatam describes in the Ras Panchadhyay that the gopis, Krishna Grihita Manasa, they lost their hearts to Krishna. How? Nishamya Gitam Tadananga Vardhanam. By hearing Krishna's flute sound, which is transcendental sound vibration, it went through their ear holes into their heart and stole the jewel of their consciousness. You see, when there is an intruder into the house, there's a thief into the house, and you keep a very uh, priceless and invaluable jewel in your closet, in your cupboard, or in your you know, in your bedroom. If an intruder comes in and steals it and runs away, what are you expected to do? You're, you're expected to run behind him. <laughs> so Bhagavatam describes Nishamya Gitam Tadananga Vardhanam. Krishna's flute sound was the thief. He was the intruder breaking into the door of the ear of the gopis, going straight into the bedroom of their heart and stealing the jewel of their love and running away. So the gopis started running behind the flute sound, which was the intruder into the bedroom of their heart. <laughs> so Shastra describes whether hearing Krishna's Bhagavad Gita, like how Arjuna heard, and Nashtamoha, all his bewilderment was destroyed, right? In the beginning, Krishna says, Tachrunu mai asakta mana partha yogam yunjan madashrayaha asamshayam samagramam yathajnyasasi tachrunu. O oh, Arjuna, please carefully hear my instructions. And at the end, me paramam vajaha. At the end, he says, now I will speak the most confidential knowledge. Please listen to me very attentively, O oh, Arjuna. And by hearing from Krishna, you can see Arjuna became nashtamoha. All his bewilderment went away. Even the Bhagavatam says, ekena manasa. They heard with one-pointed intelligence. And the, the rishis at Naimasharanya from Sutta Goswami. And they became completely joyful. So by hearing the Bhagavad Gita from Krishna or hearing about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, from pure Vaishnavas, the names of Krishna, the Leelas of Krishna, the qualities of Krishna, uh, it is described that the consciousness becomes completely cleansed. So we should be very careful. In this verse, we see how Kashyapa Muni heard from Diti and the words were to kill Indra. And immediately it caused lamentation in his heart. Another classic example of such an example would be um, Dasharat Maharaj hearing from Kaikai. Here, Diti wanted Kashyapa to do something which Kashyapa didn't like, but he promised. And there also Kaikai, uh, you know, 
presented her views and boons that she wanted from Dasharat Maharaj. And Dasharat Maharaj ended up losing his life in the attempt of fulfilling that desire. And now the question is, how did Kaikei's heart want for those desires? Because she heard from Mantra. So wrong hearing can also have its, have its uh, flip effect. Like you can see, for example, Hanuman heard about Mother Sita with the right intention from the right source. And the effect was the right principle. He wanted to bring Sita to Ram. On the other hand, you can see Ravana also heard about Sita with the wrong mood and from the wrong source. Surpanaka. And Ravana ended up separating Sita from Ram by kidnapping her. So both heard the glories of Sita. Hanuman also heard, but from the right source and in the right mood. Ravana also heard, but from the wrong source, Surupanaka in the wrong exploitative mood. And the effect was totally different. You can see the same Bhagavad Gita that Arjuna heard from Krishna. That same Bhagavad Gita Dhritarashtra heard from Sanjaya. Now the sources are also correct. Krishna is the perfect source. Sanjaya is the perfect source. The content still remains the same. But because Arjuna's mood was very favorable and Dhritarashtra's mood was unfavorable, the effect that Bhagavad Gita cast in Arjuna and the effect that Bhagavad Gita cast in Dhritarashtra was totally different. So this opens up our discussion uh, to a different direction altogether. And of course, in the interest of time, I would like to uh, wind it back to the point that hearing is important. Even from a material perspective, we learn through the ear. We learn languages through the ear. We learn subject matters, instruments, so many things through the ear. Then how much more is spiritual sound vibration important? Now, when we chant and we make a hissing sound in an attempt of chanting more, it doesn't bring in as much effect to the heart. Because Srila Jiva Goswami says, Shuddhecha antakarane tad yogyata bhavati. That the, the qualification to meditate on the leelas of Krishna comes in a clean uh, heart. Uh, Svachatvam avikaritvam. The heart must be cleansed. And the cleaning will take place by hearing. Srila Jiva Goswami very clearly says in the Bhakti Sandarbha that by hearing attentively. So let's say in an attempt of chanting more, we are rushing through the names and we're not hearing attentively. It's not bringing in the effect. We may have the extra pride of moving in the counter beads and chanting more japa, but the heart is not being as much cleansed as being in the moment and very lovingly chanting and calling out to Krishna and hearing the name. So it's very important. Now, also then we discussed if we hear, we are hearing the name or the pastimes of Krishna, the mood must be devotional and the source must be right. So if the source is correct, what should be the source like? Uh, Prithu Maharaj, when he was, when he was asked for a benediction, what benediction would you like to ask? Prithu Maharaj said, Sir Uttama Shloka Mahan Mukhachuto Bhavat Padam Boja Sudha Kananila. That let me have a million years. Uh, why? So that I can hear the sound vibration of Krishna's transcendental qualities from the lips of pure Vaishnavas. This is very important. We must hear from the lips of pure Vaishnavas, very advanced Vaishnavas. And even if the Hari Katha is very good, if it is coming from the lips of someone who is not practicing properly, the effect will not be quite right. It will be informative, but not transformative. That Hari Katha will not have the power to move the hearts. It may bring in some claps. It may impress the audience, but will never inspire them to chant and go deeper on the path of bhakti. So we must uh, We should make sure that we hear from the right source. And how do we know what is the right source? Siddhanta must be correct. Whatever is being spoken must be in line with Guru Sadhu Shastra. The person must be practicing. The person must be repeating uh, what one has heard from one's Guru Varga. The person must be selfless in the sense that should not ask for remuneration at the end of the Hari Katha. That I spoke Hari Katha, now you give me this, you give me that. Uh, one must be practicing and sharing it selflessly. And also the effect should be after hearing. Uh, this has also been explained by Srila Jiva Goswami uh, under the category of Shravandasha in the Bhakti Sandarbha. That Krishna Seva Vasana. That the desire to serve Krishna and his devotees must rise in the heart. If we are only hearing, 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 hearing and information is coming in the head, that is not the right hearing you want to do. Hearing means hearing, attentive listening, 
but also practically applying the desire to serve the holy name the desire to serve the vaishnavas in a humble mood the desire to serve the deity the desire to serve krishna by offering our life anukulya se sankalpa and pratikulya se varjan that hari katha is most glorious it must take you closer to krishna's name it must take one closer to the service to the vaishnavas then that hari katha is completely bona fide um, so in this way uh, through this one verse where nishamya tadvacho vipra vimana paryatapyata where we heard how uh, diti's words were heard by kashyapa muni and it got an effect in his heart of lamentation then that opened up the box on hearing and material hearing and spiritual hearing and the right source and the right mood and the right effect that must come through the process process of shravana um 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 in the bhakti sandarbha shila jiva goswami pad says tatcha nama rupa guna adi shabdanam karana sparshaha which means uh, shravanam is defined as the ear touching the sound vibration of krishna's name form qualities and pastimes if this description of krishna's form name uh, qualities pastimes from the lips of advanced vaishnavas selflessly hmm, uh, in the form of kirtan hari katha and hari kirtan then that sound vibration when accepted in the heart is called shravana so in this way we should uh, hear attentively and also with a slight caution at the end of the discussion if this is the effect of hearing we have to be very cautious what we are hearing through our cell phone all day long if one is browsing uh, on on instagram or on youtube and not just seeing it through the eye but also hearing the sound vibration continuously the consciousness is being bombarded with material not just material good sound vibration material bad sound vibration think about it those are the videos which take one to tamogun and rajogun they instigate lust and anger and greed more money and pride and different things and even if they are just mundane jokes it's killing uh, invaluable human life energy the ears which have been given to hear about krishna have become like snake holes where the snakes of all these uh, vulgar jokes and mundane subject matters are entering and destroying our consciousness yanna vrajanti agapito rachana anuvada shunvanti yanya vishaya ku katha matikni yate shruta hata bhagai nrupa ata saras tam tam kshipant asharane shu tamas suhanta bhagavatam canto 3 chapter 15 text 23 describes by hearing sound vibration which is not related to krishna one will definitely go to hell tam tam kshipanti asharaneshu tamas suhanta one will fall to the lower regions of nature which means one may become an animal in their next life or one may go into lower species or low lower regions of life uh, because that's what we are feeding our ears with so we must be very careful to keep our phones aside for many many hours and just keep it on for maybe about 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening and check whatever calls and messages come and respond to that and let it go and 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 uh, delete and disable all those apps which are killing invaluable human time in that time you can memorize verses you can sing vaishnav bhajans you can chant more japa you can read more uh, shastra uh, you can hear from senior vaishnavas and even on a material front you can develop more skills you can learn to swim uh, you can go for a walk you can learn a new instrument you can learn a new language and bring out the best and and sharpen even the material skills which can be used for krishna service so we have to be very careful what we feed our ears with gaurav premanande hari hari bo vancha kalpatru vesta krupa sindubya evacha patitanam bhavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namo